Hello and welcome to Garage Science, and today I have the pleasure of making a video about a project I've been wanting to do for several years. To start, I love big desks. I love being able to spread my work out and see everything and having a big work surface to do it on. I also have wanted to make a desk with a second computer display built into the desk. I had always planned to use a TV for this since you can easily get a pretty big display that way, but the cost of buying a TV to just put it in a desk made this project a dream more than anything. Well, some dreams do come true. The new place I moved into came with a TV that I was able to purchase for $5. That's right, 5 bucks. Since this new TV was already mounted on the wall in the living room, that meant my old TV was open to being used for a new project. The TV I'll be using is a Sharp 48 inch LED TV. It's been a great TV as far as TVs are concerned, and I've been very satisfied with it. The user manual containing all the dimensions is linked in the video description. I started by cutting all the 2x4s needed for the tabletop and legs. I primarily used a jigsaw and battery power drill for this entire project. Not many tools are really needed for a project like this. If anyone wants to attempt this project, I put the cut list and the drawings I created in the video description. With all the pieces cut for the frame of the tabletop, I could easily lay everything out for a dry fit before screwing everything together. I then marked and drilled holes for the 5 16th inch lag screws I would be using to assemble the frame. This entire project used about 80 lag screws that were 5 16ths in diameter and 2 inches long. With the holes marked and drilled, I assembled the tabletop frame. Since all the lag screw holes were pre-drilled, it didn't take much effort to screw them in and prevented the wood from splitting. Now the tabletop frame is finished. You'll notice later that the glass doesn't fit perfectly over the cavity for the TV, and that is because the piece of glass I intended to use for the desk was opaque and not clear, and I didn't realize this until I went to Ikea to get it and had already assembled the tabletop frame. Oops. This required me to compromise a bit, and instead of getting the glass for a tabletop, I got one for a coffee table instead. The adaptation worked out pretty well though, uh, as you'll see. Next, I attached three out of the four table legs. This was done intentionally to ensure that I had a table that didn't wobble at all. Each leg was attached one quarter inch below the top of the frame to allow some room for error with the last leg. Since three points define a plane, a three-legged table will never wobble, but it isn't very stable. I used a level to attach the fourth leg to ensure the tabletop was flat while also making sure the fourth leg didn't cause any of the other three legs to lift off the ground. I clamped the leg in place and drilled a hole for a lag screw. The table has absolutely no wobble since I took this approach and I would highly encourage anyone attempting to do this project to do the same thing because you won't be disappointed. With the fourth leg secured, the remaining lag screws could be screwed in. Be careful when picking lumber for a project like this, because if you end up with knots near the end of the board, you may end up cracking the end like I did. It's not the end of the world, but it is a little annoying. As mentioned before, the piece of glass I used was for a coffee table from Ikea. The item number is shown here. The coffee table comes with a nice thick piece of tempered glass, which is excellent for a project like this. Next, I cut the bottom of the TV cavity. This board must support the weight of the TV and was cut from 3 8 inch OSB. I installed a PC fan to provide some circulation in the TV cavity since the TV itself still consumes about 100 watts of electricity and that needs to be exhausted somewhere. I also installed a couple of vacuum cleaner filters so the air pulled into the TV cavity is clean and free of dust and debris. This will prevent me from having to clean underneath the glass all the time. The circulating air will enter through the filters on the front right hand corner and get exhausted through the PC fan at the back left hand corner. Next I marked, cut, and drilled the holes for the PC fan. The PC fan comes with a 3-pin connector. This connector has a positive, negative, and tachometer pin. Since the fan will either be on or off, I don't really care about the tachometer pin. I used a 9-volt battery to determine the positive and negative wires. The filters were set into the board and supported by a piece of OSB I screwed into the bottom of the board. I then screwed the bottom of the TV cavity onto the tabletop frame. 
After it was installed, I also screwed three layers of 3 8 inch OSB to the center of the cavity to function as a spacer for the TV. This way, the screen of the TV will be right underneath the glass. I carefully planned the size and location of these spacers so I didn't block any vent holes on the back of the TV. With the bottom of the TV cavity complete, I was able to lay the TV into the cavity to check its fit for the first time. I designed the cavity to have approximately a half inch gap between the TV and the side of the cavity. I also marked and drilled holes in the TV spacers for the 2 inch long M6 screws I was going to use to secure the TV into the cavity using the wall mount holes on the back of the TV. Next, I cut 2x4s for the shelf underneath the tabletop. I installed them 16 and a half inches above the ground so that there would be plenty of clearance to store 5 gallon buckets under the desk. Having the shelf also adds to the rigidity of the desk. After getting the frame for the shelf installed, I moved on to making the top of the table. For this I used half inch birch plywood. I used the glass from the coffee table as a template to cut out the center for the TV cavity. The finish I used for the tabletop is called Rock Hard Tabletop Urethane Varnish, made by Bellin. I applied the finish with a paper towel and initially without gloves, which by the way, I don't recommend. I applied three coats of varnish and lightly sanded the tabletop with 400 grit sandpaper before each coat. For the second and third coats, I did wear gloves. Turns out that getting varnish on your hands makes for a fairly sticky situation. After one final sanding with 400 grit sandpaper, my tabletop was done. The varnished birch gives the tabletop a very nice golden color, and the finish should last a very long time. I installed the tabletop by drilling a pilot hole and using a countersink bit to countersink the screw and avoid cracking the plywood. I evenly spaced the screws 6 inches apart around the perimeter of the tabletop. Next, I used 1 inch felt pads around the perimeter of the TV cavity. This does several things. It lifts the glass to be nearly flat with the tabletop, it spaces the glass to be the same height as the TV screen, and it adds a little bit of cushion to prevent cracking or scratching the glass. The pads were spaced about 1 inch apart except for the back edge which had them continuously. This was to provide somewhat of an airtight cavity so the circulating air would be drawn through the air filters. I then installed the TV. I connected the power cord and HDMI cable and laid the TV flat inside the desk. I wore gloves for this to prevent putting fingerprints on the TV screen. Four 2 inch long M6 screws were used to secure the TV inside the desk. With the TV installed, the glass cover was next. I gave it one last quick cleaning so I wouldn't end up with sawdust and fingerprints forever between the TV and the glass. I had to be very careful since the glass was fairly heavy and if it were to be dropped from even a small height onto the TV, it would easily destroy the screen. Next, I put a bead of silicone sealant between the glass and the tabletop to further seal out dust and debris. I was feeling a bit anxious to try out my new toy, so I quickly hooked up my laptop to take the desktop for a test drive. But because I still had to finish wiring up my desktop computer and the PC fan under the desk, and I also had to finish the shelf as well, I had to quit goofing around and finish the rest. I soldered the female end of a 5mm power jack to the PC fan so it could connect to a 12 volt power brick I had laying around. Next, I zip tied a surge protector to the front right leg to power the TV, PC fan, as well as any other projects I'd be building on the tabletop. I also zip tied a surge protector near the rear left leg to power my desktop computer, monitor, and speaker. The power brick for the PC fan was zip tied to the back right leg and the surge protectors were plugged into a UPS battery backup. To finish the shelf, I cut a piece of 3 8 inch OSB to fit the shelf and then I cut the corners out so it would fit around the legs. I had to cut it into two pieces though to be able to install it. I selectively cut the board such that the end of each half would share one of the cross members so there would be a limited wobble or looseness in the shelf. After screwing in the shelf, the desk was complete. Now I can finally use my dream computer desk. 
It's easy to do work on the table while reading something on the computer monitor, or work a CAD model while watching my favorite TV show. One of the things I really love is being able to draw on the TV display. There's more than one way to use this feature, and I can't wait to explore and innovate with this awesome new tool. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I enjoyed making it, but most of all, I really enjoyed making this desk. Be sure to subscribe and give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and remember to share it on your social media site of choice. Check out my other videos and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.